Hi, it's Miss Vital. This podcast is on fungi and is meant for AP Biology class. Elizabeth Lee Hazen was born on August in August 1885 to a Mississippi cotton farmer and his wife. She was an orphan at age two and was raised by relatives. She went to the Mississippi Industrial Institute and College. This was the first state-supported college for women in the United States. She was a fair student, and after graduation, she taught high school. And at age 31, she went to graduate school at Columbia University in New York and got a master's in biology. In 1927, at age 42, she got a PhD. She went to work for the New York State Department of Public Health. They needed an expert on fungal infections, so she returned to Columbia to study mycology. Much of the time, fungal infections are yeast infections, athlete's foot, etc. In most people, the immune system's white blood cells quickly engulf and digest any fungal spores that enter the body. Under the right circumstances, however, fungi can destroy a living body. For example, diabetics have a high level of tissue, a high level of sugar in their tissues. A diabetic's lungs are a perfect environment for um, micromycosis, which is a common food mold. Some species can grow in the lungs and through the heart. It can run hyphae, which are long strands, into the brain, destroying nerves. In the 1940s, when antibiotics started being used, it was discovered that fungal infections in patients taking antibiotics were common. Many bacteria killed by antibiotics were important in controlling fungi, but no antifungal drugs existed. Elizabeth Hazen was determined to find a drug that helped. She tested soil samples for bacteria that could kill infectious fungi. She found two different bacteria that produced substances toxic to fungi, but she didn't know what the substances were. She connected with a chemist, Rachel Brown. Like Hazen, Brown became a scientist against long odds. She grew up poor. Her father abandoned them when she was 14. She couldn't afford college, but a friend paid for it. She went on to earn a PhD in chemistry. Brown and Hazen began to work together to isolate the antifungal substances from the two strains of bacteria Hazen had discovered. They isolated three molecules, but two were toxic to mice, therefore probably to people. The third was only mildly toxic and killed any fungus it came in contact with. They called it fungicidin. They patented the drug and renamed it Nystatin. Fungicidin was a name already being used. Within five years, Squibb produced and tested Nystatin. They sold so much of it, royalties between 1955 and 1979 totaled 13.4 million. Hazen and Brown never accepted any of the money and used it for research and charity. Brown helped put many women through college as she herself had been helped. Fungi are multicellular, except for yeast, they're eukaryotic and they're heterotrophic. The cell walls are made of chitin, which is a polysaccharide, the same as found in insect exoskeletons. And they fungi reproduce with spores sexually and asexually. A saprobe is a type of decomposer that absorbs nutrients from dead organic matter. Fungi secrete enzymes outside their body, which break down food sources and then absorb the nutrients through their cell walls. This role as decomposers plays a large role in recycling nutrients in the ecosystem. Fungi can also be pathogenic and cause disease in people and plants. 80% of all plant diseases are fungal. There are also some mutualistic fungal that benefit the organisms they live with. Hyphae are the tiny filaments that make up the body of a fungus. They are tubular walls surrounding plasma membranes and cytoplasm. Mycelium are interwoven hyphae that it's the feeding network of the fungi. Most of the times mycelia are underground. In 2000, scientists discovered the mycelium of one giant Armorilia ostei in Oregon that is 3.4 miles in diameter and spread through 2,200 acres, which is over 1,600 football fields. It's over 24 hundred years old, therefore making it one of the oldest and largest organisms on the planet. Hyphae usually have cross walls called septa or septum, which is singular. The septa have holes in them for cytoplasm and organelles to pass through. Conocyta are fungi whose hyphae don't have septa. 
and hostoria are nutrient absorbing tips that penetrate tissues and are found in parasitic fungi. If we look at the life cycle of a fungus, the heterocarin is a mycelium formed by the fusion of two hyphae that have genetically different nuclei. The plasmogamy, the plasmogamy is the first stage of sexual, the sexual life cycle. It is the fusion of two parent cytoplasms when their mycelia come together. And the choragamy is the second stage. That is the fusion of the haploid nuclei contributed by the two parents. Between these two stages, the mycelium exists as a heterocarin. There are over 100,000 different species of fungi in five different phyla. The first phylum, the Citridiomycetes, contains the citrads. These are mainly aquatic and they can be parasitic or saprobes. They may be responsible for killing amphibians worldwide. They form zoospores, which are uniflagellated spores. All other fungi have non-flagellated cells. Citrids used to be protists, but modern systematics show them to be fungi. They're the most primitive fungi, and they may be evidence that the fungi evolved from flagellated protists. The next phylum is the zygomycetes, which are common molds. There's about a thousand species of zygomycetes, or also sometimes called zygote fungi. They live in soil or decaying plant and animal material. The rhizopuff stalinifer is the black bread mold. It forms rhizoids, which are horizontal hyphae that anchor the mold to the food source. The sporangia form from upright hyphae. Spores form inside these black bulbs. When mature, the spores are released. Zygosporangium is a resistant structure produced by plasmogamy. Zygosporangium is choragamy, and then meiosis occurs. They are resistant to harsh conditions. There is a new phylum in the fungi kingdom, which is called glomeromycetes. These organisms used to be in the zygomycetes phylum, but molecular systematics has placed them in a new phylum on their own. Only 160 species have been identified so far, but they're very important in nature. These are the mycorrhizae. They are a mutualistic fungi with plant roots. They extend the roots of the plants, break down soil for easy absorption by plant roots. About 80% of all plants contain mycorrhiza. They have tiny branched hyphae called arbuscules, which push into the plant roots. Ascomycetes is the next phylum. These are also called sac fungi. There's over 60,000 species of ascomycetes. They live in a variety of habitats. Yeast is in this phylum, and that's the only unicellular fungi. There are truffles and morels, which are used for food, and cup fungi, which kind of look like an upside-down mushroom. Lichen are a mutualistic fungi, a sac fungus, and algae. About half of all species of lichen contain sac fungi. Sac fungi produce an asci or ascus, which is singular. These are sacs that contain sexual spores. Ascocarps are macroscopic fruiting bodies that contain the asci. Conidophores are the asexual spores at the tip of the hyphae, and conidia are the naked spores. The next phylum is the Basidiomycetes, and these are the club fungi. There's about 25,000 species. Mushroom rusts and smuts are the main types of club fungi. They form a bestidium, which is a club shape. It produces sexual spores on the gills. The cap of the mushroom supports and protects the gills and the bestidium. There are significant fungal forms. I'm going to talk about some of those. So in addition to things like mycorrhizae, there are other important fungi. Molds are rapidly growing, asexually reproducing fungi. 
They are considered imperfect fungi because molds have no sexual stage. Penicillium, the fungus that cause athlete's foot and jock itch, are all types of imperfect fungi. Yeasts are unicellular. They are found in wet or moist habitats. They reproduce asexually by budding. And as we've mentioned many times before, they're important in the bread, wine, and beer industry. However, Candida is a normal yeast found in human epithelial tissue, but it can become pathogenic if the conditions are right. As I said before, lichens are symbiotic associations of algae or sometimes cyanobacteria and a fungus. There are over 25,000 different species. The algae provides the fungus with food and the fungus provides the algae with a suitable environment for growth. They are the first organisms to grow on bare rock and after burned forests or volcanic flows. They break down the rock to soil. Fungi have huge e ecological impacts on ecosystems. The first, as was mentioned before, is that they are decomposers that re recycle nutrients in the ecosystem. Some fungi are pathogens. Dutch elm disease killed most of the American elms because during World War II, we lent money and supplies and other things to a lot of other countries, and some of them paid us back with lumber that was infected with Dutch elm disease. The American elm was common all across America, and it was almost completely wiped out by this disease. Rusts and smuts kill about a third of the crops worldwide. And remember, most fungal diseases are, most plant diseases are fungal. Some fungi that attack food crops release toxins that are harmful to people. Some form purple structures called ergos, like on rye. If consumed, they can cause gangrene, nervous spasms, hallucinations, and temporary insanity. LSD is made from ergots. Some ergot chemicals are used for medicinal purposes. They can be used um, as blood pressure medicines or to stop maternal bleeding after childbirth. Mycosis is a general term for fungal infections. Ascomycetes causes ringworm, athlete's foot, um, jock itch, etc. There also seems to be other mutualistic fungi and plant relationships in addition to the mycorrhizae. Endophytes are fungi that live inside leaves or other parts of a plant. Most are ascomycetes. Some endophytes make toxins that deter animals from eating the plants. Other endophytes can increase the tolerance for the plant to harsh conditions and defends them against pathogens. Some symbiotic digestive organisms that help break down cellulose and herbivores are fungi. Leafcutter ants farm fungi which break the leaves down into compounds the ants can digest. There is a lot of commercial importance of fungi. For example, for food, we eat mushrooms and truffles. Some truffles smell like male pigs, so female pigs are attracted to that scent, and female pigs are used to find them because they're underground, and pigs are very good at rooting things out. Cheese, like Roquefort and blue cheese, um, fungi are used to ripen those cheeses. Aspirilagus is a type of fungus that produces citric acid for preserving colas. As we've said, yeasts are used for beer and wine. Saccharomyces cerevisiae um, is used for bakers and brewers yeast. It is the most important cultured fungi. We also produce antibiotics. Penicillium was the fungus that produced the first antibiotic, penicillin. Some fungi are also used to make cholesterol-lowering drugs and those used to suppress the immune system after organ transplants. Fungi are also being used a lot in research. Saccharomyces is cultured as a model for eukaryote cells and the genetics behind diseases such as Parkinson's. As you know, E. coli are used to make important human proteins, but bacteria can't make glycoproteins. So S. cerversiae has been used to make insulin-like growth factors, which is a type of glycoprotein. Terrestrial communities have been dependent on fungi since the beginning. The oldest fossils of fungi are 460 million years old, which is the same as plants on land. 
plants probably moved onto land in the company of fungi. The occurrence of the flat flagella in the citrids, which was the first phylum of fungi that we talked about, represent the oldest line of fungi. Their ancestors were probably flagellated aquatic protists. The flagella were lost in the evolution of the other four phyla. The variations in these four phyla represent different solutions to reproducing and dispersing on land. Animals probably evolved from aquatic flagellated organisms also. There is compelling evidence that animals and fungi diverged from a common protist. Comparison of proteins and rRNA indicate that fungi are more closely related to animals than to plants.